Welcome back after the break. Uh, just before we went for our break, we were looking at uh, Chapter 8, Fellowship, how it's important for us to, you know, as uh, people who are part of the kingdom of God, as people who are part of the body of Christ, it's not just important for us to build our own uh, visions, the calling that God has given to us, our, our own local, local church, but uh, we need to be kingdom-minded, have a kingdom mindset where we're using our own uh, vision, calling, or, uh, you know, if uh, God has given us a, a, a Christian organization to start or a, a church to start, how we can use, uh, you know, that to um, bring about a unity and oneness with all the other Christian organization and churches in our city coming together in oneness and unity for city uh, transformation, which is what is God's heart because God has not called us to work in isolation, even though he's given us different uh, functions, different callings, different visions, uh, but uh, he's given all of that in the context of um, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, in the context of kingdom, the kingdom of God. That's why when Jesus came, you know, he taught parables. And every time that he he said a parable, the key, he said the kingdom of God is like, okay. So he was not uh, teaching us to just build our own ministries, our own kingdoms, but it was to is to build the kingdom of God. So whatever we are doing, whether we are part of a local church, you know, we need to see how our local church can come together with other churches, other believers in our city, uh, you know, uh, uh, in unity, in oneness, in fellowship of the spirit, so that we can uh, build the body of Christ uh, together as one and together as one, we can, you know, uh, impact our city and transform our city because there is power in unity. There's the power of God that flows mightily and powerfully uh, when believers come together in unity and oneness and uh, our city can be uh, transformed. We can see uh, God move moving in a mighty way in our uh, city okay so we were talking on um, uh, on that uh, in that framework um, so even as we come together uh, as believers in building God's kingdom we need to respect others gifts uh, and uh, anointings and uh, ministries there can be different churches who worship who have different forms styles of worship um, you know, some of them can be very uh, quiet. Uh, there's no clapping of hands. Uh, I remember the church that I come from, uh, you know, uh, uh, if somebody does something good or the children sing a song, you know, nobody claps. If you clap, you know, it's considered as something that is very wrong. Uh, you know, people also don't raise their hands or, you know, uh, uh, and all of that when they're worshiping and praising God. Uh, okay, one or, one or two songs when we worship, there is clapping of hands. Otherwise, usually there's no clapping of hands. So, you know, some of them have that form of worship. Some uh, churches where there's always shouting hallelujah, praise the Lord, people are dancing, singing, praising, uh, things are very loud, the speaker is loud, uh, there is uh, the, the whole uh, way of worship is very dramatic, very exciting, very energetic. Um, and then there are other styles of worship where there is clapping of hands, there is raising up, there is sun, but then, you know, there is a more constrained kind of uh, a, a form of, of worship. So, you know, all of us um, from different uh, denominations, different backgrounds, uh, the churches that we come from, we have different forms or styles of worship. Uh, but, you know, uh, it's not that we complain about others or we uh, look down on, on, on others uh, or, uh, you know, uh, we criticize. Uh, we just need to celebrate how God works. Uh, uh, you know, God works through variety. He's a very creative God. Uh, there is, he brings, there is variety and diversity in the ministry uh, that God has placed us in, in the body of Christ. Different people work. Uh, worship different ways, different styles. So we just need to celebrate what God is doing in uh, each and others, uh, each one of our lives. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, just uh, enjoy it, celebrate it, don't criticize it, uh, you know, don't make fun of it uh, because our style is different from uh, different other people's style of worship or forms of uh, worship, okay? The other thing is don't judge an other man's uh, servant. Um, 
Matthew chapter 7 verses 1 to 5 and Romans chapter 14 verses 4 uh, and verses 10 to 12. So can somebody read that please? Matthew 7, 1 to 5, judge not that you be not judged, for with the judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye? And look, a plank is in your own eye. Hypocrite. First, remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Thank you, Sri Radha. Uh, we see in John chapter 7, verse 24 says, Do not judge according to appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. Um, and Romans chapter 14, uh, Paul is saying, Who are you to judge another man's servant? To his own master he stands or falls. Indeed, he will be made to stand, for God is able to make him uh, stand. So why do you judge your brother? Okay, uh, And we and he goes on to say, For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of um, God, and each one has to give an account to God uh, for how he spent his life. Uh, so here basically we are asked not to judge uh, because God is the righteous judge. He is the one who is uh, to judge. And uh, we are also not to judge another man's servant um, because to his own master he stands or falls. That means, um, you know, um, we are not to judge anyone because uh, God is uh, the judge, he is the one uh, they are answerable to. So, you know, there are many men and women of God uh, who, um, you know, uh, uh, get into some wrong uh, lifestyles, habits, uh, get into wrong teachings, wrong doctrines. Uh, when this happens, you know, don't judge, don't condemn, uh, you know, uh, uh, don't pass the, any judgment on them, uh, don't criticize them, don't use your pulpit or don't uh, gossip or backbite about them. You know, um, uh, what we need to do is just pray for them, uphold them in prayer. Uh, sometimes, you know, just uh, making this as a prayer request can become like uh, a way to criticize them or put them down. Uh, but even as you, you know, present uh, somebody else's weakness, or somebody else's shortcoming, some leaders, uh, 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 you know, fallen down. You know, don't use that prayer request to, uh, you know, at, uh, portray what they have done or how they have fallen or how sad it is. Uh, uh, but, you know, just say, let's pray for uh, a man of God in our city who I know, uh, who is, uh, you know, got into adultery or uh, the church is uh, divided. Uh, because of false teaching, just let's pray for that uh, man of God, that God would speak, that Spirit of God would work in their heart. So when you have a genuine um, uh, a, 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 a genuine interest that, you know, they've gone away from God's uh, ways and, uh, you know, uh, Satan has, uh, uh, you know, has uh, had a foothold in their life and the kingdom of God is uh, being destroyed, the kingdom of God is being broken, lives are being destroyed, many believers' lives are being destroyed and you're just uh, crying out to God, you know, God works, He moves, He answers uh, such a prayer. Uh, so don't uh, uh, judge them or criticize them, avoid talking about it, uh, uh, you know, but what we can do is pray for them, learn from their mistakes, what they have done, and, uh, you know, uh, if we have built a relationship with that minister of God, uh, you know, together with other ministers in the city, some senior leaders, uh, you can look at ways how you can restore them, build them up, uh, establish them uh, in the ways of the uh, Lord. But as you do that, you know, continue to uh, respect them uh, for who they are, that they are ministers of God, for the anointing that they have on their uh, lives. You can learn from David's life, even though David was running away from Saul. Uh, there were two instances when he could have killed uh, King Saul, uh, but he uh, let him go because he knew that he was the Lord's 
anointed and he cannot speak against the Lord's anointed. He cannot touch the Lord's anointed. See, that is the kind of reverence that we need to hold towards uh, men and women of God in our city. Uh, they might not be theologically sound or, uh, you know, well-trained like you and I are, or, you know, they cannot be flowing in all the gifts of the spirit like you and I are, or they might be outdated in what they are doing, but we still respect them for who they are and what they uh, the anointing on their lives and the, that God's calling on their life and respect them for who they are. Okay, do not gossip, uh, but um, be your brother's uh, keeper. So there are uh, uh, references here from Proverbs. Uh, can somebody read that, please? There are three references given there. Can one of you read Proverbs seven thirteen, Proverbs seventeen nine, and First Corinthians ten twenty four? Can somebody read that? Anyone's willing to read it? Okay, Proverbs 11.13. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, Proverbs 11.13. A tale bearer reveals secrets, but he who is of a faithful spirit conceals a matter. Proverbs 17.9. He who covers a transgression seek love, but he who repeats matter separates friends 1 corinthians 10 24 let no one seek his own but each one the other's well-being thank you nina so here we see that you know we are asked to not seek our own well-being but others well-being and uh, you know uh, when uh, we are talking about how it's important it is for ministers of god uh, servants of Christ, believers in the city to uh, establish relationships with uh, people from other ministries, other churches, how important it is for us to, uh, uh, you know, establish a good relationship where we're sharing our hearts, uh, where we're not just coming together to, you know, discuss about a certain issue that's going on with churches or the Christians, but it's just, you know, being transparent, sharing our hearts, our weaknesses, our struggles as ministers of God. Uh, and when when other ministers do that, you know, um, uh, conceal the matter, uh, you know, don't uh, uh, you know, don't go and talk about it to other ministers, men and women of God, other believers. Don't uh, speak it out in your church. Um, because that is going to bring about division and disunity in the body of Christ. Uh, but even as you, you know, uh, hear about another person's, another minister's uh, weaknesses, their struggles, their challenges, uh, you know, just pray for them. Uh, uh, keep it confidential. Don't gossip about it. Uh, you know, or talk about the good things that are there in other people. Yes, people can have their own faults, uh, their own weaknesses, but talk about the good things about other believers, about other ministers, about other men and women of um, uh, God. Keep quiet about their failures. You know, even if you have to use that uh, uh, to teach uh, uh, other people, you know, uh, uh, you know, you can, you can. Talk about the weakness, but don't say, you know, this person in this church, uh, this ministry leader, you know, he's going through this weakness and this is what we can learn and all of that. But you can just take the weakness and saying, you know, there is a there was there is a minister of God going through this problem, you know. Uh, so, you know, what do we learn about it? You can use this as an example. Um, and also, like I said, you know, the fellow ministers uh, if, uh, can, uh, you know, join together to restore another minister of God. Just imagine the uh, the impact it can have on the church, on the uh, organization, on the body of Christ and the uh, believers. Okay. Sadly, there are many pastors who fall away. Uh, the sheep get uh, left out. You know, there's division. They're confused. Uh, people even go away from uh, their, their faith. They believe in Jesus Christ because the church is broken. Um, there is division in the church and it's a very sad thing to hear, uh, you know, but other fellow min, uh, believers and ministers, if they come together, just build up this, uh, this pastor, this, uh, this church is going through difficulty. Just imagine the immense, uh, you know, uh, uh, 
uh, goodness it has in the body of Christ, in the kingdom uh, of God. And so even as we correct one another, help each other, do it in uh, gentleness and in love, because it says here in Proverbs chapter 17, verse 9, when we cover somebody else's faults, uh, you know, not speak about it. Cover it means not that, not that we don't address it, we address it, but when we don't gossip about it, uh, you know, speak about it in a criticizing way, uh, we're actually looking out for, uh, you know, we are actually uh, loving that person, uh, we care for that person, uh, and we're, uh, we're wanting their own uh, well-being, okay? Uh, the next thing is, uh, you know, as we go about building God's kingdom, don't sow uh, discord, uh, you know, uh, there are six things that God hates. Proverbs chapter 6, verses 16 and 19, an important uh, verse to read. So can somebody read that, please? Proverbs chapter 6, six verse 16 and to 19. These six things the Lord hates. Yes, seven are an abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, A heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift in running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among brethren. Thank you, Rin. So here we see that, you know, sowing discord among brethren is something that is totally detestable in God's sight. Okay. Uh, when we uh, when we try to bring about strife, disunity, discord, uh, God hates it. It is detestable detestable in his eyes um, you know so what do we need to do is when uh, you know we see another brother uh, caught in a sin or an offense uh, something that is wrong uh, you know we resolve it with him uh, lovingly in a gentle way uh, you know, speak the truth in love, Ephesians chapter 4, it says, speak the truth in Ephesians 4, 16, speak the truth in love, um, uh, you know, and don't go and talk about this person to others, tell what the person has done, the weaknesses, uh, because that can also bring in discord and uh, strife. You know, sometimes what we do is, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, not uh, in a way that uh, we're gossiping or we can just basically tell, okay, be careful of that teacher or be careful of that pastor or be careful of that minister of God. Or when you're new to the church, you know, uh, or new to a Bible study group, uh, they can somebody who can say, uh, be careful of that person, be careful of that family, don't join with them. They come they come across very friendly, very loving, but, you know, they will, in, uh, they will hurt you. Uh, so what you're doing is before that person can, you are actually, uh, you know, you have seen that person through your own lens. Okay. And when you see that person through that own lens, uh, you are actually, uh, you know, sharing what you are seeing in your own narrow view with somebody else. And you are cutting down their, uh, you know, uh, relationship with this person, uh, with B uh, or C. Uh, and uh, you are, um, you know, uh, maybe, uh, uh, you know, the one who's come new uh, can have a good relationship with B and C because uh, the way you are thinking, with a narrowed mind, uh, with a narrowed mindset, they are more broader. Uh, you know, they can get along with B and C very well. But by you communicating, you know, be careful, don't this one, don't that one, they are like this, they did this, uh, you know, they can come to this extent where they can uh, do this and that to you. You know, uh, what you're doing, you are actually breaking down uh, the relationship. Uh, you're bringing about disunity, and your perspective can be so wrong of that person, of B and C. Your perspective can be very narrowed and can be so uh, wrong, and you are actually stopping other people from relating from uh, with B and C. So, you know, if you have a perspective about somebody, you must keep your perspective, uh, we must keep our perspective to ourselves because that is my perspective, that is what I feel, that's what I think, you know, we can be wrong how we perceive and see other people's B and C's behavior, the way they do things. Uh, we might have mis misunderstood their way of uh, reacting, their way of doing things, uh, but we can't make a judgment on um, others based on, you know, what uh, the way that we see it. So when you are actually sharing 
uh, you are passing on your lens, your very narrowed lens to the other person. And they are also going to begin seeing that uh, person with that narrowed lens. And, you know, that's very, very sad. And it's, it's, it's happened so many times. It's very disappointing. It's very heartbreaking for the, for B and C. And also, you know, it's bringing about strife and disunity in the church. So, you know, um, uh, keep silent uh, about uh, when you're talking about others, just highlight people's positive uh, uh, nature, what they're good at. If there's something that's their weakness, something that you can't stand, something that you can't get along, you know, don't uh, talk about it. You, It's good for you to go and work along with that person. If you're not able to go and work along with that person, uh, you know, just let it be at that. But don't, uh, you know, gossip about that person. Don't pass on your opinions to others. When you do, you know, your, uh, you know, hate uh, builds up. Uh, division uh, uh, builds up in the in the group, uh, whether it's the family, whether it's in the in the uh, 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 you know between spouse and the, the parents and the children, uh, whether it's in the body of Christ, whether it's in the workplace where we're working or the Christian organization where we're ministering to. Don't do that. Okay, don't talk about the negatives about the person. Don't stop anyone from uh, relating with somebody else. Um, be careful what you say and uh, even if you have to guide somebody guide them in the right proper way that is god honoring okay uh, the last uh, the last two points fellowship is uh, life transformation you know just imagine uh, i was just talking about how if you know all of us together as believers uh, in a city come together all christian organizations local churches pastors leaders come together trying to bring about city transformation building up the city building up the kingdom of god together you know when there's genuine fellowship there's genuine uh, uh, communion this sharing together of faith there's life transformation and that is the example or that's what we see in the early church now in the early church we see that you know there was mighty signs miracles and wonders that happened that even the you know shadow of uh, peter uh, the handkerchief or the apron that paul used you know, when they uh, used it and touched people who were sick, people were healed. Uh, Peter's and Paul's shadow, when they just walked, sick people falling, just coming under that shadow, you know, they were healed. And uh, there were such mighty uh, signs, miracles and wonders that were happening. Uh, why is it not happening today in our churches? It's not because, um, you know, the, uh, the gifts of the Spirit are not in operation or not uh, manifested or the Holy Spirit is not... Uh, powerfully working amongst us no uh, we are in the last days and it says uh, you know the prophecy in joel and acts chapter 2 it also says the last days you know god says i will pour out my spirit upon all flesh there will be uh, visions and dreams and all of that uh, so we are in the last days and uh, you, which means the word of god says there will be mighty signs miracles and wonders but if you're not able to see it uh, and we're seeing we have seen it more in the book of acts we read about it in the Act book of acts the early church it's because the early church was so united there was oneness they would come together eat together they would even sell their properties you know give to those who are in need although the poor uh give to the poor uh also there was you know all all of them used to come pool their resources and they used to feed the widows the poor in the church stephen was one of them who was uh, uh you know take over uh, seeing this responsibility in the body of christ so it was just one body of christ all of them pooling their resources their wealth uh, their time together um, and that is why we see such a great move of God uh, 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 in the early church. Uh, so even as we are, uh, you know, from different local churches, different ministries, imagine if we just come together, you know, uh, in, uh, in unity, oneness, uh, fellowship, communion, sharing together, it will just bring about life transformation. Every um, stronghold in our city will be broken corruption will be broken suicide will be broken rapes will stop pornography will come to an end that is the power of god that works together just when uh, we all operate with a kingdom mindset a kingdom culture and working together as one body of uh, christ the last thing uh, in this chapter is there are no superheroes um 
you know, Paul is writing to the church at Rome. He's in, in Romans chapter 12, verse 16. He says, be of the same mind uh, uh, toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinions. Okay. Uh, God is not impressed with the size of our ministry, the number of people who attend our church, our degrees, our qualifications, our reputations, uh, you know, the, the fan following that we have. Uh, uh, God is not even, uh, you know, impressed with uh, the degrees that we get, uh, but it's, you know, he's uh, impressed when we work towards kingdom building, uh, oneness, unity, fellowship, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, all of us just coming together uh, and standing on the same level, just praising God, worshiping him. Uh, you know, there is where uh, the grace of God, the power of God is manifested very, very uh, powerfully. And we need to remember that, you know, um, we are all earthen vessels, like I said, and it's just the power and the anointing. That's the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit that is manifested in and through our uh, lives. So it's not us. It's not uh, us doing the miracles, the science miracles and wonders. It's not us when we speak that people's lives are transformed, that they are accepting Jesus, they are baptized in the Holy Spirit. But it's because of the power of the Holy Spirit that is working in and through our lives. And it's a work of the Holy Spirit in the person's life who is ministering to uh, them. Okay, so that is the end of um, uh, chapter 8. I like you all to remember this. You learn more about this, about kingdom building and kingdom God, a kingdom of God uh, in the second year, first semester. That time you can we learn more about how we can, uh, you know, what we need to do uh, uh, to build God's kingdom uh, and how important it is for us to have a mindset of being a kingdom builder more than just pursuing our own visions and calling and function that God has given to us. Okay, any questions on chapter 8? Any questions on chapter 8? Okay, no questions? No, ma'am. No? Okay. Okay, there's no questions. Uh, we'll move on to chapter 9. Pastor, okay. I have one question, Pastor. Yes, sure. So, uh, you were talking about the oneness and growing together in oneness and, you know, about the discord and um, things that we uh, say and sometimes knowingly, sometimes unknowingly it can be. Uh, I'm concerned even when it comes to a close-knit family and now like the extended family is going to a different church. And when you go to a spirit-filled church and then you know this is the truth and the truth has set you free. And you know what other people are not doing it according to the Bible. So what is the right uh, attitude of my heart and mind to accept that people in spite of knowing what they are doing is not, not right according to God. But somehow now God has touched me. It's not that I was perfect or I am perfect. Even now I am not perfect. But what is my right heart attitude towards them, Pastor? Uh, thank you. Good question. Uh, yes, that's a struggle. See, sometimes when uh, we're going to a spiritual church, we're growing the things of God, we're moving from one level of uh, understanding of God's truths, His revelation, moving to the next level. And we sometimes uh, have a burden for our, uh, you know, our family members that sometimes all that they're doing is just like a ritual. It's meaningless. Uh, they're not able to see things. They're not able to grow in the things of God. Uh, but we can't blame them because um, the church that they're going to the, or the fellowship that they are in, what they are taught is what they learn, right? What they are taught is what they learn. So, for example, for me also, when I came from mainline church, my mainline church was, uh, you know, build people strongly in evangelism, in missions, in the faith, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, in the scripture, very scripture based, solid scripture teaching that we have. And I've grown in my understanding of God's word and my faith from uh, the church that I've been brought up. And I'm thankful to them, uh, even as a child, you know, upbringing the, the Sunday school VPS, everything was so good, so solid foundation. And I'm able to use what I learned, what I received, what I saw, implement that now, uh, even as I'm doing children's ministry. But yes, the 
the church didn't teach us about the 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 work of the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the the fruit of the Spirit was taught, but the gifts of the Holy Spirit that we can't move in signs, miracles, and wonders, all that was not taught. Uh, but you know, even we, there's no one speaking in tongues and baptism of the Holy Spirit. All that I, I I learned after, even not even in Bible college, it was not taught to us. We didn't have a subject on Holy Spirit, baptism of the Holy Spirit, and all of those things. Though we, it was an evangelical college, and we had students come all over India, one of the famous called Bible colleges. Uh, but we did not have anything, any teaching about the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, nothing like that. It's um, all I learned after I came to APC. So, you know, uh, I have a lot of my uh, uncles and my cousins who are very, uh, you know, regular church goers, read the Bible, pray, do everything. Uh, of course, they, they, they also live their lives to honoring God and pleasing God. But when it comes to some of these areas where they're so innocent, sometimes doing things like, you know, uh, it really does not matter to God if you do this or you don't do that and some rituals that they keep and things like that. Uh, but we slowly, you know, very lovingly, uh, when when they ask us, why aren't you doing it? And we tell them, you know, uh, this is what scripture teaches us, this is what the word of God. Because if we say, okay, this is not right, this is not what we should not be doing, this is what our church is saying, then it will put them off. But always what we need to, uh, how we need, uh, can teach people is show them from the word of God so what the word of God says the word of God says this and you know then they say okay no the word of God says this in in this place uh, so what do you mean so you know you can always say that you know always you need to look at scripture in the uh, uh, interpret scripture in the entirety of the whole context of the rest of scripture so what are other scripture passages talking about this uh, or why is this writer writing this in what context uh, so when we explain to them you know it's actually not we telling them or we talking but it's the holy spirit who works uh, in them okay so that's why paul tells uh, timothy don't argue uh, don't uh, fight because there's a lot of false teachings and uh, wrong teachings, doctrines that were that were in the church in Ephesus, where Tim Young Timothy was, uh, you know, Paul had stationed him there to look after those churches there. And Paul says, "Don't argue, don't fight, don't uh, uh, come, you know, argue with words because arguing with words, fighting, striping is not going to bring any result." Because the end result will just be division, will just be strife. Uh, but he says, you know, just preach the truth, just teach the doctrine, um, just uh, you know, teach the uh, the full uh, word of God. Uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, use the word of God uh, uh, correctly, teach it correctly. You know, um, and so he says, you know, do that. And when you teach the doctrine, uh, uh, the undefiled word of God, unpolluted word of God, uh, just teach it, you know, that the word will speak for itself. The spirit of God will work in the lives of people. So he's telling uh, Timothy, don't go and argue with all of these Jewish uh, people who come from the Jewish faith, they become Christians now, they're bringing in all their uh, Jewish faiths, rituals, circumcision, Jewish fables, myths, and they're telling the Gentiles, you have to incorporate all of these things, then only your uh, salvation is counted, you're made righteous in God's sight. Uh, but Paul is saying, don't go and argue and fight with them because the end result is going to be fruitless. Uh, it's just going to cause division. But what you need to do is uh, preach and teach the undefiled, the unpolluted uh, word of God. Teach the word in season and out, out of season. You know, correctly admonish the word of God. And when you do that, the word will speak uh, for itself. That means he's saying the Holy Spirit is the one who will work, will make the truth known. Uh, uh, because... Um, uh, Jesus says, uh, you know, John chapter 17, your word is truth and the truth will set people free. So what we can do is, you know, just pray for them, ask God to give us opportunities where we can speak to them and just share from God's word and uh, just leave it at that. Don't force, don't argue and just pray and the, whole, the Holy Spirit will just work in and through their lives. That, that, did that help? Jechen? Yes, Pastor, it was very helpful. The same situation that I was going through and God answered through you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, sorry, I didn't read that in your uh, end of the song. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so uh, is your name Jay Chin or? Uh... 
because jachin joel i thought was a man's name but <laughs> uh, my name is pronounced as jackin it is one of the pillars in solomon's temple so boaz the other one is jackin so the spelling in the old the uh, versions is j c h so c h is taken as k and most of them have this doubt so from school <laughs> there's <laughs> an <laughs> okay so i pronounce it as ja jackin yes jackin jackin That's jackin thank okay you. thank you for asking Okay, Jackie. Nice to know you and hear your voice. After uh, I mean, at least towards the end of the class, get to know one student is is a it's a great joy. Thank you. Yes. Okay, we'll move on to chapter nine. If no one has any questions. Okay. Money, something that is uh, all of us are very very excited about, interested. Some of us are not interested in money. some of us say we spend money but we don't know how much we spend we don't keep account some of us money is not very important for some of us money is uh, is is very very interesting is very important and it's okay you know uh, because the word of says the word of god says that uh, money is uh, is money evil what does the word of god say does it, does it say that money is evil what is your idea no okay prabhu says no thank you prabhu First Timothy chapter six verse ten says, "The love of money is the root of all evil." Okay, so money by itself is not uh, evil. Uh, God also looks for productivity. Uh, how much we multiply what He's given to us, and that is what we look at. Uh, you know, uh, the parables that we just saw, the parable of the. Um, a uh, good steward in Matthew chapter uh, 25 god is looking for multiplication he's looking for interest he's looking for doubling of the money so there's so two or three parables based on that uh, so you know money is not evil but the love for money is the root of all uh, evil so sometimes when we start off in our ministry uh, you know uh, yes money becomes very important because how are we going to run the ministry how are we going to do the work how are we going to provide for people who are volunteering or who are serving or even as a church you know uh, find uh, the money is very important because we have to run the church whether it's paying the rent or the light bill or paying the staff or uh, providing for people uh, so yes money is important but you know uh, sometimes uh, being in ministry we can end up uh, being money minded where we are constantly thinking about money about how we need to get money to you know meet all the resources is or we can also get money uh, money minded to the end where uh, we are in a church where the church is doing well in terms of finances but we're looking at how we can get raise up more money so that we can uh, do bigger things or greater things or you know but in christian ministry we need to keep our focus on the lord on his call and we need to take our attention off money because god will provide it's not that we don't care about it we don't bother about it or we are not good stewards uh, we need to be good stewards of the resources god has given to us uh, it does not mean that we don't keep uh, we are not accountable for the money that comes in we have to be accountable we have to keep proper accounts of every money that comes in every money that is spent we need to make that accounts um, uh, you know transparent so anybody in our church anybody at any time can see it um we need to be accountable even to uh, the government in terms of our income tax uh, you know filing our income tax as a church keeping things open transparent so the government can also see you know they cannot just uh, you know raid us and then comes out in the news and then you know it just uh, brings such a, a hard break for believers who are in the church who have been contributing and also to the body of uh, uh, Christ so uh, at apc you know our uh, the finances uh, the financial statements are very open at the end of the year the whole finances of the whole year you now what came in how they spent it what was spent in various areas is just uh, there anyone in the church can go uh, have a look it's accessible for anybody and everybody anyone can raise questions why was so much spent on this so much spent on that what you did for this so you know if anyone asks any questions uh, we are here to uh, answer them give them that should how it should be when we run our own ministries our own churches that uh, you know we focus on the lord but we trans uh, transparent keep accounts uh, keep 
very clear um, and um, honest and there should be honesty and integrity in handling of uh, money okay um uh you know sometimes we can get uh, easily slip into the love of money uh and how do we know that uh, you know when uh, money begins to control us some of the things is that we're constantly thinking of uh, uh, money okay how do we know that money begins to control us or is overtaking our thoughts our decisions uh, is when we're constantly thinking of money uh you know uh, sometimes uh, where we go and preach minister which church which place you know uh, we are thinking about uh, uh, or we decide that based on the amount of money that we are going to get as a, a gift so if a big church in a big city calls us we are ready to go but if a uh, say a small church in a village calls us and we think you know oh you know it's not worth going spending my time going all the way there because it's a small church a village church they might not give me a big contribution so if our decisions of where we go and speak and minister to or who we are going to minister to is based on money uh, then you know we are controlled by money uh, the other areas where we we can sense that we're being controlled by money is uh, you know if uh, how much i praise and celebrate god is in proportion to the offering uh, that we get uh, sometimes we give import more importance to people who give bigger offering uh, you know we give them prominent places uh, leadership roles talk about them after church which is around them meeting them speaking to them visiting only them but you know uh, church people from believers in our churches or ministries or people we know who are from poor backgrounds uh, low backgrounds uh, we know that they are not going to contribute much we don't associate much with them talk with them much or even relate with them or visit them uh, that is also an, another uh, uh, you know uh, indicator that you know we are being controlled by uh, money sometimes we are also uh, you know given to um, uh you know uh dishonest means of getting money uh you know we uh, we compromise on our integrity just to make a little more money just to uh get in more finances whether it's in ministry or in the in the church um, uh, which is wrong uh also is an indicator that we are controlled by um money and you know uh, we can also be people who associate with uh, politicians uh, business people uh, rich people in the city uh, or uh, you know other uh, leaders who are uh, uh, you know church leaders or rich uh, we associate with them so that we can in turn receive some kind of monetary benefits from them is another indicator that you know our minds are being controlled uh, by the love of money and we are becoming more carnal they're feeding our carnal nature than our spirit filled uh, nature okay uh, don't uh, do things because of money um, you know um, some people think that uh, they see christian ministry as an easy way of uh, you know getting money uh, an easy job whether just to have to you know uh, uh, preach a sermon on sunday and uh, you know uh, uh, do a bible study on wednesday and then the rest of the week just uh, meeting uh, people just going to different congregation members which is a good thing because you go and get good uh, you know stuff to eat snacks or a dinner or lunch or you know they some people even uh, can give you uh, uh, a cover with some money so you know people get into ministry with this whole idea that you know it's a very easy uh, vocation a very easy job where you everything is taken care your children's education is taken care you get a house to live uh, your you get a bike and things like that uh, but that should not uh, become our motive for why for getting into ministry or doing ministry because some people even see ministry as a business where you know we can be uh, we can associate with foreign uh, uh, mission organizations or uh, you know foreign churches where they send a lot of money and you know we see people who do that ministers of god who are very rich living lavish lifestyles um, you know uh, that is very very uh, wrong sometimes you know some churches uh, you know uh, uh, connect with uh, overseas ministries and then they uh, get financial support from them uh, uh, 
which is okay, but you know, we have our own resources in our own city, which is good enough to uh, support our own city. But sometimes uh, these ministers can uh, collaborate with foreign ministries and um, misuse the money that comes in uh, because they are so uh, naive. They do not know what, how you're using your money, how you're wasting the money, misusing the money. Uh, and they're just sending in the money resources, but you are just using it for your own lavish lifestyle living and, uh, you know, uh, doing things that you shouldn't be uh, doing. You know, some people are also in the habit of uh, inviting overseas speakers uh, or having, uh, you know, crusades for the overseas ministers or uh, worship teams. They offer to, uh, 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 you know, host conferences or crusades for them. And in the process, you know, uh, uh, if if as if the whole sound system just say costs two lakhs, you know, uh, the person can put four lakhs because they know that you know these people are not going to come and investigate everything. Uh, so there is a huge, uh, you know, robbing of funds, stealing of funds, uh, just on this whole context of inviting uh, people from overseas uh, to do crusades and uh, uh, conferences here and cheating them. Uh, sometimes also people can start charitable organizations, Christ charitable Christian organizations, and, um, you know, they can collect funds uh, which they don't spend for uh, the orphanage or for the orphans, but most of the money is spent on them. Very little is spent towards the orphans, and that is also, you know, uh, doing things in a dishonest way on the con in the whole framework or the context of Christian ministry. And that is not honoring in God's sight. And we need to know, uh, you know, what God says in, in the book of Numbers. I think it's Numbers 32, 23. Uh, God says, your sin will find you out. So sometimes when we do these things, we think, you know, nobody will know. Uh, we can just make some good money and we can enjoy life uh, and things like that. But, you know, uh, God says, your sin will find you uh, out even in Achan's context you know Achan when he robbed he thought nobody knew about it but God saw it and his sin was revealed in front of the whole Israelite community and he was he and his whole family was stoned uh, to death okay so when we serve God we need to always be mindful of this that we are uh, serving a holy God People might not be watching how you spend your time how you spend the resources that God has given to you the money that God is watching and uh, you know he will hold us accountable and when god acts no one can stop him uh, the other thing is we need to remember that when we use whatever money that uh, uh, for ministry it's tight money it's uh, the money that people are giving into uh, god's work it belongs to god and so we are so much more accountable and responsible so even from the day one that i have been in ministry whatever i do how i spend my time how i uh, work during the office hours um, uh, you know uh, uh, with sincerity honesty preparing for various things doing my responsibility i always remember that i am like my salary is from tight money and that i'm accountable to god Maybe nobody's watching me, what I'm doing, how I'm preparing, uh, you know, my work, but God is watching and, uh, you know, uh, I'm going to be held highly responsible because I am in God's, uh, uh, you know, ministry. And we see that even in the context of the tabernacle and the temple, you know, so live with that fear and reverence is always very, very important uh, to keep in uh, mind. Okay. Um, uh, sometimes, you know, yes, uh, there can be cases where, uh, uh, you know, we need foreign funding, we can ask, but be genuine, honest about it. Um, uh, you know, uh, sometimes uh, there are poor people in poor situations uh, who need uh, uh, to be ministered to, to be pro given into financially, uh, we can support we can support them you know richer churches can take care of the poorer churches richer churches can contribute in the rich churches in the city can help uh, the poor churches in the villages in the, uh, uh, to start off and help them enable them build them up on how to you know get resources from their own uh, the places where they are uh, ministering because i i believe that you know india is not a poor country 
uh, whether it's the city or villages, you know, we can be self-sufficient. We actually don't need foreign finances or foreign funding uh, to help uh, build the ministries or support the ministries here in our own uh, nation or in our own uh, cities. Okay, we'll stop here. Just have one more minute. Uh, any questions? We'll continue with this uh, on Friday. Friday, we'll I'll take the. Uh, the two hours and then the last hour as well, Pasadena's. If you finish it in the first two hours, then we need not uh, continue in the third hour. Okay. But thank you so much, um, all of you, for joining class uh, today. Anyone has any questions? Okay. No questions. So there are no questions. Thank you, in person students, Jackin, Shiv Kumar, Prabhu, Samuel, and Karen for joining class. Have a blessed day and a blessed week ahead, and I will see you all on, uh, on Friday. Thank you.